So today we're going to talk about my wigs. Um, there have been quite a few comments and questions about why I wear them or compliments on all the different colors of my hair. And I'm kind of like, should I tell them it's a wig? I'm to I'm very open about the fact that they're wigs and it's pretty obvious most of the time that um, these are hair hats. <clears throat> but um, there are layers to why I wear the wigs and there is there are a few stories behind why I wear the wigs. And um, I'm sure that there are other humans that can relate that maybe aren't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm an open book and um, I'm happy to tell you. Um, they're, you know, kind of difficult stories to tell, but, um, but at the same time, not. Um, I think that it is, it's healing for me to share them. So um, I guess it all, it starts when I was a kid. Um, did I mention I have... I've got my nature-esque candle here made by the um, the YouTube manager at Psych2Go, Cindy. And I guess if you're new here, hi, I'm Amanda. Um, I'm the voiceover at Psych2Go. If you if you haven't checked out Psych2Go, go go do that after this. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, growing up, I was a little alien. There weren't very many other kids like me. Um, I'm mixed race. I have very curly hair. Um, my body was proportioned differently, um, but then I had the blue eyes and the light skin, and I, I confused a lot of people. Um, but everyone found something to pick on, regardless. The big curly hair, the big butt. Um, so I was always insecure. Everyone around me had straight hair, and as a kid, I think that you're more prone to want to um, fit in. Um, so yeah, I started straightening my hair with like an iron um and that destroyed my hair not it didn't take long for it to be destroyed um but it was whatever um and then i drowned <laughs> and then yeah my hair got stuck in the bottom of a hot tub um i'm getting my stories twisted i drowned first yeah i drowned first so i had long curly hair this was kind of before school so no one was making fun of me if anything Adults were like, oh, your hair's so pretty. Never cut it. Can I touch it? Or just touching it in the grocery line? Like, <laughs> um, don't do that. Uh, so I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. So yeah, growing up, long curly hair. Um, and then I was shocked when I went to elementary school. I also had a Jamaican accent, but yeah, that's when the bullying started. Um, and then I drowned. My hair was stuck at the bottom of um, a hot tub in the filter. And I actually died. I flatlined. They couldn't get me out. Um, my friend thought I was I was joking. I was upside down in the hot tub. And I was grabbing her hand to touch my hair and feel that it was stuck in the filter to um, realize that I couldn't get out. I remember the feeling of like this hand it almost it was almost nice at first i was doing handstands in the hot tub and i felt this hand like caress the back of my head and um and i was like oh that was kind of nice and then it caressed me again but this time it didn't let go um she finally realized that i'd been in, under there for for too long and she called my dad and my dad came rushing in he had his both feet on each side of me pulling my head trying to free me and my long thick curly hair had <clears throat> been sucked into the filter and then wrapped around the propeller and almost like become a rope and he couldn't get me out so he ran inside my mom was calling 911 he um, found a pair of scissors and um, those wouldn't work they couldn't cut through my my hair rope finally he found another pair of scissors and uh, succeeded to cut me out the um, paramedics were there and they gave me mouth to mouth <clears throat> excuse me um but i was blue and dead and had no pulse and they i think i don't remember how the story was because i wasn't there but um what i remember being told is that um they had kind of given up on me and then suddenly i started screaming and coughing up 
water, so much water and blood and screaming, please don't let me die, don't let me die. And that's what I was screaming before I went unconscious underwater. I was, first you gasp for air and then you start swallowing it and then you, you die. <laughs> um, but I didn't die, I came back, but I lost all my hair. And my hair was a, a part of my identity. It was long, thick, curly, down to my butt. Um, and it was like praised in my family. It was something that everyone just like kind of praised. I, I was proud of it. It was what made me feel beautiful. Even though the kids made fun of me at school. That was more confusing. I would go home and I'd be like, they told me that this isn't how you say the word. And, and they, they say that I can't be Jamaican because this and that and, but, um, yeah, I lost all my hair and when I went back to school, the teasing was even worse because it was short. So it was curlier and it was bigger. And, um, I got called Sideshow Bob and one person said, you look different. And I was like, yeah, I lost all my hair. I drowned. <laughs> she was like, oh, that's why your face looks fat kids are so cruel so um years went on and i'm growing my hair it wasn't growing properly in the the very back um where all the pressure had been trying to pull and free me and um i discovered extensions weaves begged and pleaded excuse me <clears throat> i begged and pleaded my mom please please i need I need to get this weave. I'll feel whole again if I can have my long curly hair back. Uh, she was reluctant because it was very expensive. And, um, but eventually I was able to twist her arm. It was during my parents' divorce and she was a little, a little wigglier at that time. I was able to get my way. Oh man, I was, I was a difficult child. I mean, come to think of it, I can't even imagine she Anyways, that's a whole other story. She made it happen. And for the first time in so long, I, I, I felt so beautiful. I cried. I, I looked in the mirror and it was like, there she is. Um, so I was addicted. I had to always have a weave in from then on out. I even taught myself <clears throat> how to do it. How to cornrow my own hair and sew them in myself. Tried to teach my mom, but she didn't. She was like, I'm not. Oh, I'm not doing this for you. <laughs> so I really, I had to figure it out for myself. And then I had friends who helped me as well. Sometimes I had braids, sometimes I had weaves, but never my natural hair. And with my hair, it's quite fine, um, the actual hair. And the tight braids in certain areas like here, and yeah, mainly here and here, um, couldn't handle really, really tight braids. And then the pressure and the weight of the extension sewed on. And I started to develop traction alopecia, which is um, from the, the tension, you lose your hair. So yeah, a couple times I got <clears throat> discount weaves, like a cheap, um, a cheap weave. And um, it was so tight that my hair, like my scalp started scabbing because it was pulling so tight. The things we do for beauty anyways. Um, so finally, Later on in my adulthood, I gave up. I gave up the weaves and I went natural and I let my hair grow and it was growing. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> it was growing and it was healthy and it was curly. It was getting longer, fuller. I was still playing with colors and dye and stuff. So, you know, I would damage it with bleach and have to chop that off and grow it. But for the most part, I was going natural. And then in 2018, um, I got pregnant. Um, it was an ectopic pregnancy, so the the fetus, the egg, the baby, not the egg, the fetus, attached to the wrong part of my uh, uterus or not my uterus. I think it was in my fallopian tubes. So there was no chance of it surviving, and if it grew. There was no chance of me surviving so we had to figure out how to end this pregnancy fast 
And um, I had two choices to get um, it surgically removed or to get a chemo injection, which could cause all the regular side effects of chemotherapy. Um, we were looking for the um, the implantation. We were looking for the where the pregnancy was, and they couldn't find it. But my um, my hormones, my human growth hormones, and all the signs that I was pregnant were rising quickly, and then it showed that the baby was growing wherever it was, not in my uterus. Um, so the only option was the injection, because if they were to go cut it out, they wouldn't know where to cut it. So um, I got the um, I got the injection, and it, this is it's so rare but it failed. So the baby was still growing and if at any moment there was um, like an eruption, it would be life-threatening. So not only was I pregnant, sick, tired, hormonal, and I was also afraid for my life. But at the same time, mentally I was in such a, a dark place that I also kind of wasn't afraid for my life. I was like, if this is it, this is it. I also have depression, like severe um, depression. So the combination wasn't great. So I had to get a second dose of the chemo. And one of the side effects was that my hair was coming out in patches. Um, the other thing that was super weird was water tasted really creamy. Has anyone experienced that with chemotherapy? I kept saying like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with the top, the top, the tap water? It was like even the... um. Even this bottled water, like why is all the water gone bad? It's all so creamy. None of it is refreshing. Like imagine you just want like a nice fresh glass of ice, like fresh ice water and it's creamy. So weird. They were, we were still watching my hormones. I had to get blood work every other day for months. Um, this process took almost half a year until I was finally like, okay, I'm, I'm okay. Um, I think I was still on bed rest or like watch when I finally miscarried and it was 2019 it was before before COVID um yeah I miscarried on New Year's Eve and I was in so much pain and I remember I was in such a dark place that I was like I called I called 811 the, the non-emergency number and I was like this is what's happening and she's like this is an emergency you need to go to the hospital right now call someone and I was like oh, it's New Year's Eve I don't want to ruin anybody's day um <laughs> so instead I'll just let this kill me like my my mind was not I wasn't thinking straight but I lay there in pain and waited to die but I didn't I miscarried and I sat there and I told myself that this was my second chance this was my chance to take care of the baby in me. <laughs> Not the baby that was in me, but the, the young me, the baby me. All of the versions of me that, um, that I haven't loved properly. I made the decision to, to really take back my life. This is like, this, this was two of, I think, you know, a handful of near-death experiences. I just, I'm not dying anytime soon, apparently. It's not my time. Um, so began my journey to uh, recovery and growth and evolution. So uh, 2020, so about a year later, I was growing my hair back, but it was... <clears throat> It was patchy like it was like there were thick spots and not so thick spots and it was uneven i think i actually did get extensions at one point for a little while which was just awful because yeah i did um it was pulling on areas that didn't have enough hair it was a bad idea but it made me feel better for the moment but in 2020 <clears throat> my mom ended up in the hospital out of the absolute blue she had had some tests done and um, thought nothing of it. And then she was working at the office and the doctor from the hospital, I believe, 
like this is like not normal a doctor that shouldn't be calling her called her and said you need to go to the hospital right now um something is seriously wrong with your heart like you shouldn't even be standing right now so she was rushed to the hospital and um there were some very she had to have emergency sorry i'm getting shaky it's weird because these are i think internal emotions i feel i think i'm fine going in to talk about it but there's feelings bubbling up um she had to have emergency surgery this was just at the beginning of covid so um it was just before they stopped letting us um visit our loved ones in the hospital so I was able to visit her. Um, it was very, very scary. I had no idea. None of us knew what was going on or what was going to happen. But she got a pacemaker put in and she's good. Um, that was around spring and COVID was just really kicking in. And it was like, obviously the world was just turned upside down for everyone. But I had also had my own series of events where... Um, where my life had turned upside down in a good way. I had a second chance at life that I was still processing. I felt like I had a second chance um, at, a, at building a stronger relationship with my mom. Oh my gosh. Uh, and I, uh, we were all stuck inside and that's kind of my favorite place to be. So I had an excuse. Oh, I had an excuse to focus on music and art and creation. And that's when I started this channel. And that's when I decided to chop all my hair off and start again. So I did. And um, I loved it for a few months. And then it got to this awkward phase where, because it's curly and it grows in every direction, but like it's also not curly enough to be like a full on afro or like really be cute. I have to style it every day in order for it to look cute. Let me have a moment with my candle. What do you say now? believe one of my favorite words i am so emotional yeah so my hair was just it was hard to maintain you have to i have to style it in order for it to look for it to look cute and i i had also started online shopping which i think maybe a lot of people got into during this whole um situation and uh i found a website that sold uh synthetic wigs for really cheap and i was like what's the harm in trying they're so cheap and so i tried and i loved it i felt like i could wear what i could you know i could be a different character every day i could my hair could match my outfit i loved dyeing my hair before now I, my hair can just grow naturally and healthily and i can wear my hair hats and feel confident going outside without going through the whole process of wetting my hair and putting all the products in and styling it and waiting for it to dry so <sighs> Okay, we're still going. So that is why. That is why I wear my wigs. They make me feel pretty. They're easy. Here's the downside, though. Here's the problem. I no longer want to support the website that I was buying them from. I'm not even going to tell you where I got them from. It's fast fashion. Um, it's terrible for the environment. I love the planet more than I care about what I look like. So this batch of wigs that I have, this is it for me. I just have to take care of them. But they're hard to take care of because they really don't last that long. They start getting really like costumey, like witchy wigs, but I'm doing what I can. And hopefully my hair will grow. I'm thinking about maybe putting braids back in for the summer. And that's it. That is the truth. That's the truth about my wigs. I really hope the audio worked this time. If you saw the last video, it was a complete fail, but well, not a complete fail. It was still a video. Mm, yeah. So that's that. Um, so if I'm just gonna send you all over here, if you if you ask me again. 